The biggest change can come from the most unexpected individual. With the audience at your fingertips, all you need is a little push. Okay, let's not waste any time and get right down to business. I've been following this one with some interest for quite a while now, ever since I saw its first trailer. And it did take quite a while plus an unfortunate delay for it to be ready, but at least it's finally here and it's ready to rock out. No Straight Roads is a game that's really up my alley, a game that goes down the path of harnessing pure punk energy the likes you've never seen before in order to spread the message of rock and roll. But that's enough abstractions. What is No Straight Roads all about, really? Hey, the name's Mayday. I wield the guitar, and he is Zook, and he plays the drums. And together, we're Bunk Bed Junction! Woo! These two very colorful and likable goofs are our protagonists. They live in the cartoonish, absurdly larger-than-life metropolis of Final City. A city where music is so integral to everyday life that electricity is quite literally generated by it. Meaning the city's largest music label and its government are essentially the same entity, which goes by the name of NSR, the eponymous No Straight Roads. While Zook and Mayday rock out super hard in their audition to try and get a contract going with NSR, they are rejected by the council of artists that are currently topping the charts and the CEO herself, a no-nonsense kind of lady that goes by the name of Tatiana. As if getting rejected wasn't enough, rock music is also out loud as EDM becomes the only thing that plays all over the city and to add even more salt to the wound, blackouts start happening when it turns out that EDM actually can't supply the city with enough energy to function with the backup supplies going only to NSR's megastars. That's the straw that breaks the camel's back, and deciding that they had enough, our heroes craft a clever plan. No. That is, to hijack the megastar concerts and punch them in the face. Uh, it might not actually be all that clever, but hey, you can't fault them for earnestness, can you? So how do they go about their business of trying to defeat the NSR? Well, their rock revolution adventure translates to gameplay in the form of a music-themed hack and slash. Every hijacking begins with our heroes needing to go through a series of enemy encounters and platforming segments where they must defeat enough enemies to break through the security barriers standing between them and their mortal enemies. Once you manage to pass through that, you get to engage on two-on-one boss battles against the mega stars themselves. Combat is pretty simple, you get a button to attack, another button to dodge, and a third one that allows you to transform nearby devices into helpful ones, like force shields or automatic turrets, and you can also, of course, jump. You also get two bottoms for triggering equipable special attacks, but if there is one real oddity to combat is how flying enemies cannot be engaged with your normal melee attacks, so instead you must defeat ground enemies and gather musical notes that you can shoot out of whatever instrument your character currently playing as is using. But you cannot use them against ground-based enemies, they are for ranged enemies only. On a cooler note though, no straight roads can be played in co-op, but you can also play it in single player and you can change between both characters at the press of a button after a short cooldown. This is necessary because, contrary to my first impressions, Mayday and Zook actually play differently. They are not just gender flipped versions of each other, oh no. Mayday is a heavy hitter with powerful individual strikes and an energy bar that is divided in only two segments, while Zook is a combo master that has individually weaker attacks but can easily cancel and dodge out of any of them for a higher degree of control, while also having a truckload of segments on his energy bar. But in turn, each special he can use is also less effective than Mayday. They also both can transform the same devices into different gadgets depending on which character triggers the transformation. So there is a lot going under the hood here than you might think at first, even though at the end of the day it all blends together in a simple to understand soup. Of gameplay. A gameplay soup. It's a food analogy. Most levels have their own visual gimmick and sometimes a little specialized platforming to spice things up, but they are mostly simple and rely more on the composition of each enemy group you find than a very specific gimmick. Enemies change and evolve into harder versions of themselves as the game goes on, and perhaps more importantly, they all move according to the beat of the song, so it's worth to pay attention to it. Your attacks, however, don't have to be synchronized to the beat, which is a neat little touch as it reinforces Mayday and Zook aren't playing by the NSR's rules. 
since they just destroy the rhythm of the ADM background tracks wherever they go. The base combat might be simple, but it really works here as you often have to face an overwhelming amount of enemies and dodging and striking back in time with the beat is already hard enough without needing to pull off a smoking six style combo during it, with special note to the range of the enemy's attacks which is very very large. But of course, those levels are just built up to the big moments, the real stars of the show that are the boss battles between the players and, wait a moment, simple combat paired with straightforward levels that all culminate into spectacular boss battles against colorful and charismatic villains? Hey, this game is just a child-friendly No More Heroes! They even have the scoreboard after each battle that shows the heroes slowly climbing through their ranks. What the f- ah! Great. You owe me a TV, mate. <clears throat> Uh, each megastar is full of personality. Thanks to the game's wild art style and the animator's excellent work, every single character looks and moves like a living cartoon character in 3D, when they are not just cutouts. Thankfully, even when they are cutouts, they are still brought to life in the form of hilarious gags and excellent voice acting. I've heard complaints about the voice acting, and it's true that the voices are exaggerated to hell and back, but honestly, every main character just sounds like exactly like you think they'd sound from their looks. It is all very fitting to the energetic and explosive atmosphere the game maintains for most of its run. It's always good fun to enter a boss arena and get a taste of what's to come during the introductory cutscenes, but what's even more of a blast are the songs that play during said battles. Since the game is all about music, of course No Straight Roads got a devastatingly good soundtrack. From conventional EDM tracks to J-pop to neoclassical music, every boss got a theme that fits them to a T, and a level that is also visually tailored after them, so they can completely dominate the game with their presence whenever they are on screen. They are much more than just characters. They, for lack of a better explanation, they can shape and paint the world itself in their colors, imbuing it with their personality itself, which makes for a memorable wild journey through a variety of music styles and art styles in which you never know what trick will the developers pull out of their head next. Picking favorites between the megastars is hard, but if I had to say something while avoiding saying any spoilers at all, I definitely have to say Yinu is my favorite boss battle, while Eve has the most interesting personality and background. There's just something so humanizing and endearing in the way the writers chose to portray artists and their struggles, that everyone from Mayday and Zook to the megastars, they are all flawed, human, but they're also likable characters trying their best. And I do think playing through the game is the best way to experience their individual stories, so I'll stop right now. Another feature that gets a spotlight during boss battles is parrying, because you see, by simply pressing the attack button at the right time, you can parry back any purple attack an enemy throws at you. The game tells you you can just dodge them if you want, but given the game has a rating scale specific to parrying attacks that ranks you at the end of each hijacking, yeah, you want to parry when you can. Which is pretty hard since you have to pay attention and follow the musical cues as the attacks fire too fast for you to react to them visually, but they are always fired following the beat of the music, so pay attention to that for maximum parrying fun times. But enough about that. Let's get back to talking about personality, because you don't just go around from hijacking to hijacking in a linear level fashion, instead every time you beat a megastar you get thrown right back into Vinyl City, which serves as a fully explorable hub world of its own that has quite a bit of personality by itself. You can't really attack anything during it and there are no enemies or side quests waiting for you, but I still I'm glad they decided to make it into a fully fleshed place because of just how much running around lets you take in the world the story takes place in. I won't go as so far as to say it's a leaving briefing world, mostly because it's basically just a meme sentence at this point that I'm sure are already inappropriately used at least once, and because No Straight Roads makes no attempt to ground its world into any kind of realism at all. But it still is a world, a world that follows its own crazy rules, a world in which a character can essentially teleport for the sake of a gag. But it's a world nonetheless, and going around it, inspecting different objects and getting both Mayday or Zook to express their own individual thoughts about them, while running around collecting stickers and collectibles that further explain the backstories and motivations of the megastars themselves, just works to make everything feel more believable, and the stakes more tangible, even amid all of the craziness. For you see, 
the cutscenes are constant and longer than you'd expect. Vinyl City itself is filled with colorful characters like Cool Guy, Unicorn, and Asshole Difficulty Man that you can talk with as you explore. And there's all sorts of nooks and crannies that might hide collectibles, but mostly exist just to vibe with the rest of the game. The story and the writing here aren't just excuses to get the crazy action going. They are front and center in trying to tell a genuinely interesting tale with genuinely likable characters at the forefront. And I know I'm not the most critical person ever, who could only enjoy the stories of Beethoven and the music of Shakespeare, but I do believe I have standards, I do like to believe that, and the presentation of No Straight Roads completely fulfills all of them. It seriously looks and feels like the best of DreamWorks movies, or dare I say, even a Pixar movie, if they ever manage to get out of their rut and produce another hit as big as the ones from their golden days. And I also want to give a special shout out to all of the 2D animation in this game that is pretty cool and blends perfectly with the 3D models, especially Sayu's cute commercial. I'd definitely buy more chips if this mermaid was advertising them, haha. <laughs> I'd die for this mermaid. And all that energy and rocking out and shouting is pretty great, but it can get pretty tiresome as well. So what is one to do when one is overwhelmed? Well, you can always go back to the sewers, Zook and Mayday's hangout, where you can apply stickers to your equipment to give them temporary buffs, or you can choose mods that can change your special attacks, and you can also play at underground gigs, which allow you to use your fan power that you get from getting high scores at the hijackings to upgrade your power with passive bonuses. Also, you can check out collectibles, feed your sewer alligator, and play an old school arcade game. Not even here am I safe from the beep. Beep, beep. And after you recharge your batteries and you're ready to go off to the crazy, wild, wacky world once again, you might eventually run into a bit of a problem. Because I don't have any problems with the gameplay, nor with the presentation, but when you put them together, one easily overwhelms the other. I don't think the game necessarily needed to be more complex, what is there is quite fun and considering the range and frequency of enemy attacks, I was never bored. In fact, I think it's almost impossible to time everything correctly if the combat demanded much more of me, but the thing here is, to the gameplay itself there is no gimmick, there is no absolutely breathtaking combo chains or anything of the sort compared to the presentation, which is just so different from most games. Trying out to carve its own niche and doing such an excellent job of it as well, the gameplay just simply fades into the background into comparison. That's right, No Straight Roads managed to be a game so good, it managed to make itself look bad. But at the end of the day, I think this might just be a matter of setting expectations. It's not that I don't have a problem at all with the gameplay, because I do, it is buggy as hell, and even after waiting so long and a delay, there are still so many bugs everywhere. I saw people getting hard crashes, which thankfully didn't happen to me, but what did happen to me were the jankiest hitboxes I have ever seen in a video game. Getting hit from attacks that missed me by at least 2 meters, spawning a pickup box with no damage detection so I couldn't break it no matter what, the list goes on. And also the game is short, like very short. And I personally prefer when games don't waste my time, because then they also become endlessly replayable, and trust me when I say I will replay No Straight Roads. But in a perfect world with endless budget and time, from a pure game design perspective, I think they could have fit in at least two more mega stars, give or take. But, but you guys tell me if you think that's still too much or still too little, you can tell me. But my point is, No Straight Roads is quite a ride, and it's one that is not perfect but it's shining bright enough to be one of my top contenders for one of the coolest games of the year. It is the perfect appetizer for fans of No More Heroes like me before we get a full 5 star course meal, hopefully next year, but even after finishing it, it still left one very big question open in my heart. When can we get Sayu merch? <laughs> 